Hey guys, it's Mei Mei. In our new stamp set called Brutiful, when we designed it, I had in mind wanting to turn this little teapot into a snowman. Now this is not a holiday or winter set. It does have the word holiday. You can use it for your holidays and warmest wishes, but you can do it with so many things and I thought this was adorable. So all of you guys wanted to see how I made the snowman, so I'm gonna show you, but I want you to stick around because there's a bonus. Halfway through, I'm gonna show you how to turn it into a reindeer. I love this one just as much, so let's get started. So first I took the teapot stamp itself and I'm going to actually just stamp the shape of the teapot and then do some fussy cutting. This card is one of those that I call like a make a fuss card because I'm going to spend some time on it. This one and the reindeer, but sometimes it's fun to just do that. So I'm using Versafine Onyx Black Ink. Because I'm not coloring, I'm going to let the paper do the work, which I love. I love paper piecing. It's one of my favorite things to do. So this kind of takes me back to that love. I am... I'm fussy cutting this with my Tim Holtz snips. I don't always do that because they do have kind of a slightly serrated edge, but they work fine for this project. And I do like how short the little blade part is so I can get into those little nooks and crannies. And the other thing, we make these so simple for you guys to be able to cut them. I try to do that on purpose, just nice clean lines. But you could use your um, Brother Scan and Cut to do this if you wanted to. Except for what I'm doing right now. I'm cutting the cap of the, or the top of the teapot off to use as his snowman hat. So that's why you see me cut through there. We're going to use that in a second. Now I found that a one and three quarter inch punch works perfect to make his um, head shape. But play with what you've got. If you have an oval, it might work too. But I just felt like this worked really well. I think I could have even gone smaller. But see what you got and see what you can use. Now, when I put his little um, teapot hat up there, I felt like it was a little too skinny or a little too skimpy. So I'm taking the saucer image from the stamp set and I did the same thing. I fussy cut it and then I'm gluing it together to create a bigger hat section. I think that that made it a little meatier, a little beefier. And so his hat will look a little fuller. So I'm just, I do a lot of test runs. Whenever I'm doing these kind of things, you can see me kind of lay it out here and I have to do that. It helps me to know if this is really going to turn out like I want it to or not when I kind of lay it out and look at it from time to time. Even when I think I'm doing it well, I'll probably lay it out three or four times throughout the process. So I'm going to glue this little hat um, piece together and make it one solid piece to go onto the top. And you probably noticed in the um, after picture that I showed you in the beginning that I do color this with a Sharpie marker. Now, because I cut it off of the little teapot I did in white, I end up coloring it. But if you knew you were going to do this ahead of time, you could just stamp a portion of the teapot to get the top and the little saucer on black cardstock, and you wouldn't need to color it with your Sharpie, but it works fine for me. I just think this is kind of cute. And think about this. Maybe you don't want to use the teapot section, the little top at all. What have you got in your stash that you could use to make him a hat and just use the teapot body? And you can use whatever you got. I love to mix shapes. I love to look at things and try to see something else in it besides just, you know, a teapot or a saucer. I think it's fun to do that. Now, I dug into another stamp set. This is the carrot from my stamp set called Hair Peaking. And it's the smaller of the two carrots on that set. But it works perfect for his nose on this size circle. So, again, some fussy cutting. I love to fussy cut. Some people say they don't. It's kind of controversial, isn't it? But I love to fussy cut. So there it is, testing it out, wanting to see how he looks. Couldn't decide if I wanted to go with the straight hat or have it on a little curve. Actually, I don't remember what I did at this point. I think I put it on straight, but we'll see. Now playing with the Happy Tree stamp set and picking out some little eyes. I find that I use these little solid eyes a lot in things. So I'm going to um, stamp his little eyes down. And I also, I stamp the eyes before I put the carrot nose on, before I glue it down. So in case I need to move the nose, I can because once I stamp, I've stamped. That smile is also from Happy Tree. I think it is super cute. Now, you guys always say it needs eyebrows. You always say that. And I did eyebrows and I did not love them. I felt like once I finished, he looked a little menacing, which happens to me a lot with eyebrows. But don't worry. I come back later with my white Uniball gel pen and just color in the ends of those a little bit to make them a little shorter. And then he doesn't look so gloomy. He looks all right. This is actually one of the stamps from the Happy Tree set, the little um, oval that can be used for eyes, mouth, um, and here I'm using it for buttons down his little tummy. I think it's super cute. So I added those there, and then I decided to color them in with the black Sharpie again. Use any marker you got or whatever. I just had that one handy, so I colored all those little uh, buttons in with the black Sharpie marker, and he ends up looking kind of cute. One tip is if you want your snowman to look chubbier, 
make your buttons closer to the neck and that makes his belly look rounder like if I moved them up but I was trying to save room for a scarf which I still at this point did not know what I was going to do for a scarf so I kind of played it safe by putting them right in the middle. Now it's time to work on his scarf and 100% full disclosure I did not know what I was going to do with his scarf at this point but I did decide I wanted to use some of my Baker's twine from my stash and this is kind of a soft fluffy Baker's twine that I had so I started by gluing it down. Once I got it glued in place, I got to thinking, because I punched his face out of a piece of paper instead of stamping it, I punched his face, how funny, instead of stamping it, his face doesn't have a dark line around it like his tummy does. So I decided to take a marker and just do a trace around the edge so that the marker was kind of on and off of him and give him kind of the same look as if I had stamped his face because it just kind of seemed a little disconnected from the top to the bottom. See why I say this is one of those make a fuss cards? That's what I call this. Like I'm sitting down and I'm kind of making a fuss over it. But it's fun when you're done, you have something really cool to look at that you've created. So for the Baker's Twine, I did not know if I was gonna leave a scarf hanging at this point. I didn't know what I was gonna do. So I left that tail on the end in case I decided to leave the scarf. But I decided to wrap this four times. I thought it ended up looking cute to be kind of chubby like that. And once I got it all wrapped, I left some at the end down there to tie together because again I thought I was going to leave a scarf and I glued it down again on the front. I decided I wanted this to stay in place so I just took some of the art glitter glue, ran it underneath the twine and then pressed that down. So the twine is not going anywhere regardless of what I decide to do with the tendrils on the end. So you'll see here I ended up tying like a little knot and leaving that scarf but I didn't love it and it goes away in a little bit. So then I decided, like everything, it needed stitching. I don't know what it is about stitching, but it just seems to make everything come to life and seem a little more whimsical. So I stitched the entire thing and I used a thin line marker. This is one of those Illustrated Faith markers. I wanted it to be kind of thin and look like actual stitching so it didn't take away from the snowman in any way. So there's all his little black and white stitching done. I even did the little base because I felt like it needed it. Then I came back with my white pen and did his hat. And I thought that really made the hat make sense because it was a little disjointed at first, but that really tied it together. I'm going to pop him up on foam squares on my card. So that's what I'm doing here. So I wanted to bring you in close and do some pointing out of what I did. I showed you how to assemble this guy, but I went back after I made him. And can you see the shimmer and the shine that's on his nose and his hat and in the cup? I used some of the Nouveau Crystal Glaze on top of that. You'll see me do that on the nose and just a second on the Rudolph. And I popped his little carrot nose up on some foam dots. And this cup, I just paper pieced and it's straight from our beautiful cup uh, set. However, for the reindeer I'm fixing to show you, I'm gonna use a whole different set. I'm gonna use Cuppa Cuppa, and I'm gonna use a different cup for that one and show you how to mix this set with that set. So let's get started. So reindeer are everywhere right now, and I seem to be wanting to turn everything that sits still into a reindeer, so I thought I had to do it with a teapot. Now this was not my idea. This was Mandy's idea to take the steam from the teapot set and turn it into antlers. And at first, I was just gonna do one on each side, but after playing around, I discovered that you needed to have two for each antler, because it makes it look more antlery, if that's a word, but we're gonna pretend like it is today. See how they look more antlery? So here I take a three quarter inch circle punch, and I punched a red piece of cardstock for his nose, and the same eyes for the snowman. I'm telling you, I'm using those eyes like crazy. So the same eyes, and I do get brave, and I do mess with eyebrows again, but this time I think I nail them. I think I get them right this time. I had to put my head in the way, but I think I get them right this time. So you'll be able to see, see if you agree with me. These look right. I think I stamp them in the right spot and I get the right expression. So I was pretty happy about these. Eyebrows can change the whole look, the whole look of any little face project. All right, so for these, you're gonna take the steam. And what I did was using that line where the teapot top sits on the pot. I used it as my guide for where to put my little antlers. And so on either side, I just glued them right there beside where that line is. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to glue the second antler right to the top of this one um, to give it the longer antlers. It You could leave just the one, but I think it's cuter with the two. And it was super simple to do. So here I am gluing those onto the top center. And then I love, I just think this is cute, but I'll tell you what, you could do this with a snowflake. You could do this with stars. You've seen me do it with stars. Play around with what you've got in your stash if you don't want to sit there and play with this, or if you don't have this stamp set, use what you've got and see what you can turn into reindeer. It's super fun to do that. 
So there's our little antlers on there. We're gonna let those dry. And then I decided to pop his little nose up with a foam square. So I'm gonna stick that on there. And he is just, to me, he's adorable, but you know what he's missing. Everybody knows what he's missing because it's what really brings them to life. And that is stitch lines. For this one, I did the white because he was brown. And I think it just, I don't know, it just really sets off the image. To me, if you're if you're ever making something, you're like, you know, this just feels flat to me. I don't know why. Then try adding stitch lines or a matte layer where you can. I'm going to load this guy up with some foam square on the back and get him ready to go onto the front of the card. But we're going to work on the cup next. So I told you I'm using the cup from the Cup of Cup of stamp set because for me with the reindeer, this little mug just made more sense. And this paper I'm using is from the Perfect Winter 6x6. I love this paper. It actually has a little sweater pattern in it. It's so cute. Now I want to give you a tip about scissors that are fussy cutting I've never shared with you before. When you are fussy cutting, if you take your scissors and you turn them out on a slight angle, you can see where your cut blade is going and you line your cut blade up with your image. I'm going to show you what I mean by angling them. Instead of straight up, turn them out just slightly so you can see what you're doing. It's almost like laying them flat on the page, but then you just run your blade right along the cut line. It really helps you to get your fussy cutting done really neat. And if you don't get it super neat, then take a marker and just run it around and cover that up. This is a trick I learned from Christina Werner ages ago from one of her videos, and it's perfect. Now, I colored in the mug with um, a brown color, but I didn't like the brown color. It didn't, against the blue, it didn't really turn it into hot chocolate. So I went back with this red and I decided that if I added this red on top of that brown, it would give me the look I was looking for. So I just mixed a couple of colors together to get the actual hot chocolatey color I was looking for. You guys might remember back when I did my card series or card making and we made all those bases that I was using. You told me to use them into in other videos, so I've been pulling them out. This one is a 5x7. I never make 5x7 cards, but I pulled out that 5x7 card base and thought this fit just perfect. I wanted the cup to feel like it was sitting on a table, like a tablecloth covered table. So I went into my perfect winter stamp um, paper pack, the 12 by 12, and I pulled out these stickers. And this is a border sticker from that paper pack. And I thought it was super cute. The other border sticker from that same paper pack, though, is this little scallop. And how cute is this to look like a little scalloped edge of a tablecloth? So I'm just sticking those down. And when I cut them away, I just stick them right back, the excess, right back on my sticker sheet so I can use them until they're gone. And then I'm going to add these guys down. At this point, I decided, you know what? I think that it still needs a couple of things. One is its sentiment. So I pulled off of Cup of Cup the sentiment that says Cup of Cheer. And then from the Brutiful set, I took the sentiment that says Have A. So the sentiment will now be Have A Cup of Cheer. And I'm putting the Have A at the top. And I've already put the um, cup of cheer sentiment on my block, but you'll see in a second, I'm going to take it off the block and I'm going to lay it where I want it and then pick everything up at the same time on my block. Then I know when I stamp, it'll look like I want it to look. You can also do this with your stamps themselves. You can lay them over so you can see the black facing so you can see what they look like. But if you do it this way, it's usually pretty good. I decide to cut a little strip down because I'm going to stamp onto a little strip that I do a little ribbon tail on. So it looks really cute hanging there at the top of the page. And I think I did about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, something like that. Using my Versafine Onyx Black, you know, that's my favorite for all sentiments. Stamp, have a cup of cheer. Then I'm just going to use my snips and ribbon tail this. You've seen me do this a thousand times. Um, I'm just going to snip that up and then I'm going to put it in the top corner of our little page. I think this really sets it off and I like playing with sentiments in different areas. For me, I normally put them kind of in the middle or kind of low. I think it's cute to have it coming from the top and just kind of hang over the page like that. Now it's time to assemble. So I lay everything out, but then when I do it, I'm thinking that mug is a little bit plain. So you know what I do? I go back to my sticker pack. I love these sticker sheets from these paper packs. I'm using them like crazy. And I decide to put it on the mug and make the little mug be a snow day mug. I think that is super cute. So just stuck that down. And now we're going to foam square everything and get it ready to assemble onto the front of the card. Now for assembly, you'll notice that I cut this piece of paper exactly the size of the front of the card. So it'll be a full five by seven with no matte pieces around it. So I'm just going to glue this piece down and match it up exactly 
on the front of the card. And it's super cool because when you're doing this, you can just kind of tap the card on your work surface to make sure you get everything lined up just right. I know we struggle sometimes with getting our mats just right, but when you're covering the whole front of the card, it's super easy to do it just like this and line it up using the tabletop to help you out. Here comes the foam squares and assembly. This is my favorite part is putting this little card together. I think it is adorable. So put down the little cup in the bottom right on our little faux table. And then this guy, I'm going to put him up where he's kind of pouring into the cup. I think he looks cute like that. I love how he turned out. He's probably one of my favorite things I've done with the teapot. I want to do more, but I think he's adorable. So for the sentiment, I normally would pop it up on foam squares, but because he's popped up and I want it to kind of live behind his antlers slightly, I, let, I went ahead and put it straight down onto the card, and I do have to wiggle it a little bit and get it under that antler because I should have just slid it the other way, but I didn't. But I wanted that to kind of go behind him, so that's why he's not on foam squares. I think it's perfect to do it that way. Then I decided I needed to take some the steam from the cup of cup of set and stamp it above the cup so it looks like it's hot. So I just used some more VersaFine Onyx Black and stamped that. Now it's it's chancy to do this after you've done this much assembly. So if you're not comfortable with that, just skip that part or use your pen to draw it or something. But I just thought it'd be cute. Now this cup needs some marshmallows. So using the marshmallows from the cup of cup of set, the ones in the cup of cup of set are individual. The one in the beautiful set is one whole line, so you have both options. I love these little marshmallows. I fussy cut them, which literally took seconds. They're really just a square, so they're not hard to cut out. And using the gloss um, from Nouveau, I went ahead and filled in the hot chocolate section of the cup with the gloss. And I decided as I was doing this with those marshmallows sitting there, I thought, I wonder if I could tuck the marshmallows into the gloss so that when this is finished, it looks like they're kind of half in and half out of the liquid. So I use my tweezers and I just kind of place one. I just really just drop it into it. And using the tweezers, I pushed the bottom of it into the gloss and it kind of gave it a little dimension. I thought it was super cute to do it that way. And I ended up doing that with all three of them. And the gloss then acts like a glue to keep my marshmallows in as well. I just tried when I was putting the gloss down to not get so much that when I was doing this, I was squirting kind of the little gloss all over the place. I wanted to stay in the top of the cup section and this works just right. I just think these are adorable. When it dries, the cool thing about this gloss is it's dimensional. It stays dimensional. So when it dries, it does really look like the little marshmallows are kind of in the liquid and kind of tousled in there. We all know they would have melted by now if they were real, but for, for card's sake, they are preserved nicely in the gloss. I add a little bit more over the bottom where that bottom uh, little marshmallow, the top marshmallow is kind of sticking out just a tiny bit. Now I do his nose. I really love this stuff. I'm using it on everything, so you'll see it a lot, but I just swirl this around on his nose. And one thing I try not to do is I try not to over flood the area because if you're not careful, and I've done this before, you'll put the gloss on and walk away and you'll have so much on that it'll kind of bleed over the edge. So I try to get it right to the edge and stop. And that's just what it needs to get you a nice shiny Rudolph nose. When I move my hand, you'll be able to see what it looks like. Look how cute. It's already got a little shimmer to it. Love it. Okay. Had to do some more. I couldn't stop there. So I brought out a little Wink of Stella, glittered up his antlers, and that is pretty much it for the card. I think it turned out super cute. And as soon as I went to finish, I remembered I forgot the dots in his eyes. Anytime I do dark eyes, I like to add this little white dot to make the eyes pop. It just really brings him to life. There you go, guys. So you know the challenge is to see what you can do with our teapot. What can you turn this guy into? There is no telling, and I'm looking forward to see it because you guys are always better than I am at all of it. I'd love to see a Santa. I bet you've already got your brain wrapped around that one and working on it. So if you do make another kind, if you make a Santa or any other kind of teapot, or even if you just use the stamp set as it is, we want to see it. You can show it to us on our Facebook group called May May Made It, and so did I. You can even go to our website, maymaymadeit.com, Click on the more button on the menu bar and choose customer gallery and you'll see what everyone else is making and you can share your projects there as well. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. For links to supplies and things that I use, just check out the description box below. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.